this is very cool actually to be able to all kind of talk together like this i i wish it was because we were all actually together but of course so, so be it at the moment um but as far as i know like there really aren't a lot of families that can say that they have um this kind of of legacy and everything in the touch for health field right and this idea that we all have been able to kind of learn together and learn from each other and pass things down. So uh, the first question that I wanted to ask everybody was just what has Touch for Health meant for you? And you know, how do you use it in your life? I don't wanna sound sort of dramatic, but Touch for Health is kind of been a lifesaver for me. Mm-hmm. I've used it since like 1983-ish, but after Paris was born, I kind of had a bad time. I I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and another autoimmune disease. And I was basically told that I was going to be on meds, quite possibly disabilities. And that was a big wake up call for me. And it was an aha to go back to something that I knew. And that's really when I started taking my courses and started using it professionally as well. So for me, it's, you know, it's 20 years later, no meds, no disability. And it's been an amazing career for me. So it's been something, like I said, that's kind of been a lifesaver. I can say likewise for me too, because many years ago, I was becoming very arthritic, about 40 40 years ago. And then uh, the chiropractor that I was working for went into kinesiology, touch for health. And uh, he told me that I was allergic to wheat. It literally saved my life. Within about three months, I noticed a vast difference. No headaches, no aches, and that's been going on. And I've I've been able to use it to help my family, which I really appreciate. Yeah, I would say that for me, I mean, growing up in kind of an environment that's always been conscious of health, um, especially natural health, I've always had kind of an interest in the body, in, in health, in health issues. And I'm one of those people that I'm always kind of curious as to the origin as to why something's happening. And I think there are a lot of answers out there as to kind of what happens and kind of a surface level, but touch for health is really an the specialized kinesiology is the first thing that's kind of been like, well, why is that happening? And what do we do about it? And provided that solution. And that's something that's really important to me personally with my health and also with, with my students and with people in my life. Well, seeing as kinesiology has been a part of our household for as long as we can remember, quite frankly, it's just always been there. It's always been a practical application to our lives, right? You leave the house, you do your switch ons, your zip ups, all that. And then you go through the day just a little bit better than you might've been otherwise. Those little techniques have always been my personal favorites. Just the things that allow you to perform at your best self. To the extent where occasionally I notice other people being flustered or having an odd walking gait. And my immediate thought is, why don't you just fix that? So (laughs) that's been a huge thing for me. We went on a walk yesterday and he made me stop mid walk to do my gates. (laughs) (laughs) Yesterday morning. Yeah, I mean, just it always is being a part of your life really just changes how you see things, how you think about things, how you think about your own health and gives you the tools to really um, use the self-responsibility model and like be really in kind of control and have the tools to feel like you can help yourself and you can help other people. So yeah, it's just important all the time. <laughs> I, I was thinking of that too, Hannah and, I, and Ezra, because I was thinking that uh, when, when we were talking about this, that if I had to think back between my job which I'm doing all the time and just things like that, that I'm incorporating, I would be really hard pressed to think of a day um, in the last 20 plus years that I haven't used touch for health, like that I haven't muscle tested something. I, I don't even, I don't even know how I would cope with that. Yeah. The number of times in a day where you like stumble over a word and you kind of just automatically <laughs> start rubbing points. Other people <laughs> don't do that. Always have this like mental running um, kind of like uh, narrative in my mind. Like the other day I was doing something and it was like a dance workout and they made you do this. And I'm like, but that's going to unzip me. And I was, <laughs> I was like, I have had it. I can't go through my day being unzipped. That's not practical. 
<laughs> the horror. Gotta rape that person. <laughs> you don't know what you've done. <laughs> I'm just seeing you like frantically zipping up after your work. Yeah. Just being like, <laughs> then fix it. <laughs> Good for health panic mode. <laughs> it's a little five. You should write that as a class. Oh, I'm I'm kind of glad that you said what you did, Hannah, because I was thinking about it. I mean, a lot of people have heard me at, at different conferences talk about, you know, how there was just always muscle testing in my house when I grew up and that I, I took for granted that that's how people dealt with issues like that. That's what you did when you had a cold was that someone would muscle test you and tell you how much vitamin C to take. But um, for me, when I actually learned the the system was when the kids were like four. And for me, a lot of what it was, was um, suddenly feeling like I had the tools to be empowered to do something if my babies were sick, right? And it was this like, this huge thing that suddenly when they were hurt or when they were sick or when something went wrong, it was like, I felt like I could do something and I didn't need to take them to the doctor and I didn't need to take them to see a different practitioner. It was like, I could do something. And that doesn't mean that there weren't times that, you know, I, I did have to do that, right? Because some of you just fell down a lot and that's okay. Um, we got through it, but, <laughs> so, you know. Everyone looks at us, right? Look at you too, Paris, okay? <laughs> I'm not the only class, okay? <laughs> I just want to say that this is really cool because I have my daughter, my granddaughters, my great grandchildren, this doing this and looking after their bodies and respecting who they are and, and their bodies. It's really nice. Yep. It's great. I'm I just every every time I get into it again, it's really fun. And it was um I know this isn't really like in the flow of the questions, but we I taught a gems flow class yesterday and uh, I was just telling them no, about we it. That's where you were walking to when you were just stopping at the gates. And um, it was just such a cool class for me because I had some students online who were people that I know from, um, you know, other courses and that sort of thing. But then I had a group of people here and they were all people who had done their Touch for Health training with Hannah and Ezra. And so um, I had them and, you know, Jora, who's only eight and some of their students, and it was very cool to, um, to be able to take those students that, that you guys had been working with and kind of help them with the next level and have you guys helping me with that, and very cool. Um, guys, guys, what? one of them got reactives immediately. Nice. Just, <laughs> just off the bat. It just made sense. I was um, just laughing at mom's answer earlier because it was so like, professional at the beginning and she starts and she's like well you know it really saved my life because I had Paris and then I was having a bad time <laughs> let it in and I'm already under the bus somehow I had Lexi first and everything was great and then Paris yes. came along <laughs> Okay, so then the other question to ask then is, and we've kind of already touched on this, frankly, because there's so much overlap between what does Touch for Health mean to you and like, how do you use it every day? How is this part of your daily routine, your daily life? Um, how are you making use of it all the time? Well, for me, uh, I literally begin my day with it too, because at my age, it's very important to do that. So <laughs> I literally begin my day with it with touch for health and what to take and and it i really like that what to take like you're testing your supplements daily mm -hmm. daily cool yeah um you know i use it for work so i'm using it all the time and when i'm working with clients of course then it's a reminder for myself but i think right now i'm on screen so much like I'm just on screen so much more than I would normally be on. So all the techniques that I use for that, like the visual inhibition and, you know, the hydration and the zip ups and switching, I think have become a little bit more important in the last year. Okay, you're up, kid. Oh, I was going to say that for me, like the parts of Touch for Health that are, are part of my daily routine are probably like the most simplest. Like we've already talked about like switching points, zip ups, ESR muscle testing foods, like those things that almost fit seamlessly where you're not almost taking time out of your day for Touch for Health. They're kind of just worked into what 
I already do every day when I wake up. I mean, it's become more part of our lives, I think, since we started teaching. So I've been spending more time thinking about it, more time kind of on the concepts, and it's now becoming part of my work. So, um, so it's definitely kind of come to the forefront in a different way. But absolutely, the things that Harris said, like I was testing for food at dinner uh, half an hour ago. So. <laughs> Those small practical things, as I said, those have always been particularly special to me. And we have been looking more at the actual academia of it more recently as we are teaching as students. But also we use Touch for Health a lot on goats <laughs> and various other homesteady animals. These are legitimate things that we do. Birds. Just birds and they, i've definitely they used touch your health on a bird before yeah, uh, yeah birds cats dogs goats so many goats <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's wonderful to have this tiny life that you are assisting probably like what you said about children but instead of children <laughs> it's what I'm saying. <laughs> i think that the great thing about the kind of smaller more simple techniques is that like Touch for Health is best used when you are stressed. And for me, at least, I'm not usually stressed at home in my house. I'm stressed when I'm out places. So it's not practical to be, say, doing a balance when I'm in public or on a Zoom call. But those little things kind of fit in so that when you're in a scenario, it's those other things are great when you have time. But when you don't have time, when you want to be a little bit more inconspicuous, they're really great. Well, I was so keep at this because I, I would agree with everything. I mean, having those little techniques, but also the framework, right? Like I'm watching a lot of people. Um, a lot. I had this conversation with, with somebody the other day because they were really talking about COVID and, you know, was this manufactured and is this a pandemic and somebody else going, no, this is a virus and somebody else talking about something else. And there was, a lot of like confrontation in this discussion and um in a, and then to my horror people turned and went you're a healer what do you think and I went ah, as I do in those situations <laughs> and um I stopped them and it actually doesn't really make much difference to me because the way that I would deal with it for myself the way that I would deal with it for my clients is the same and they kind of stopped and they were like, what are you talking about? Right. And, and I'm going like, it doesn't really matter what the stressor is. What matters is what the body's energetic field is doing. And if the body is balanced, it's, it's not going to be susceptible in the same way. And if it does get an infection of some sort, it's going to get rid of it so much easier. So it, the diagnosis doesn't really matter all that much to me. What matters is like, why is your body stressed and how do we balance that? Right. Mm -hmm. And it, I realized that having that framework, which comes from touch for health, self-responsibility model, other energetic kinesiology kind of classes, it has taken away a lot of fear, right? Because I'm not scared of um, a virus or I'm not scared of whether there's something, you know, terrible um, chemically happening in that. Instead, I'm just looking at what can I do to bring my own body system into balance? So I think it gives us an interesting frame. Yeah, that's such a great point. Uh, now that you say that, that's really, really true. When this all is hit, you know, my first thought is, well, we have the technology, we have the tools, and if this should happen, we know how to deal with this. So it does take away a lot of the fear. It's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, I've been working with people with COVID, and now with people that have been having the vaccine, and we're just balancing the body, and it seems to be working okay. Good. Yeah, I know that a lot of people here are kind of like, well, are you going to get the vaccine? You know, would you kind of weighing the pros and cons of it? And it does take away a lot of anxiety going, no matter what I choose, whether I choose not to get it or I get COVID or I get the vaccine, I can, no matter what kind of comes, there's, there's tools to deal with it. There's a way of, it's not just like, well, I'm, I'm helpless. If I get sick, I get sick. If I get the vaccine, you know, it's, there's a lot more control and power in having tools to deal with whatever comes up. Yeah. Back to that being empowered, right? And just knowing that you can handle it. 
So, um, I mean, of, of the six of us that are sitting here, not, not to leave you out, Grandma, but, um, you know, five of us are like actively teaching Touch for Health. And so I'm curious, and, and this is especially for you know, Paris and Hannah and Ezra, um, what do you, like as an instructor now, what do you need from Touch for Health as a modality or as an association? Like, what do you need in order to be able to move forward and, and teach? How can you be supported? I was thinking about this earlier. I was having kind of a hard time thinking about um, like what, I personally need from Touch for Health and an easier time thinking about like if I had the chance to upgrade it, <laughs> what would I do? One of the things that I know we're kind of struggling with right now is like the business and marketing side of it. You know, how do you even get that? And I understand there are courses on that. And even within kinesiology, there are courses on that. I know that you've written it and that's why. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'm just saying that in general, that's what's missing in a lot of specialized kinesiology kind of communities and in Touch for Health because it's not, it's written to be for your family, for your neighborhood. And that's wonderful, but it means it's not written with that information in it. It's not written for like, how do you do, use this as a business? Um, so I would love for that information to be a little bit um, easier to access, I guess. And the other thing would be more fun class material. And at this point, slightly more accurate class material because we have, um, we know a lot more now and we can maybe take some pictures that are, <laughs> I know there are actually people working on, um, on newer pictures that show the vessel test a little bit easier, but yeah, more fun class manuals or materials that could be available to people that are just a little bit more engaging would be, I think the biggest thing I would do. What, um, would, make what would make it fun? Less dry, more engaging. Sparkles. 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 <laughs> All this. So this is, this is yeah, it. <laughs> And really, that's that's not really class material so much as te teaching method. That's really more of a class <laughs> aesthetic. <laughs> I I like to use sparkles as a teaching method a lot. So I put them in the ITW class. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. In somewhere in my teaching manual, I have the word stickers in like all caps as a note on the bottom of a page. And I don't know what that means or how, like why I thought that was as important as I obviously did. I'm assuming you're giving them stickers <laughs> as indicated by my mind putting yes. a sticker I'm on someone's yeah, forehead. I'm just saying, as I think it's important. Yeah. Um, more fun class manual, as in, um, if you give a teenager another textbook, they're not gonna wanna read it. <laughs> So I don't know, I haven't put a lot of thought into how that would actually look. I know that the Tony Lilly manuals have kind of tried to make things a little bit, you know, there's, um, there's text that's off in separate boxes where there's a summary on the bottom or there's, um, you know, there's more pictures on the sides or something like that. So I don't know, some kind of variation of writing. So it's less just 50 page long text blocks. <laughs> Look, most of the techniques that we teach in Touch for Health are so easily demonstrable and they're so practical and they're so active and they flow reasonably well depending on how they're taught. Mm -hmm. We understand that there are different learning styles and that some people are more tactile and some people prefer to read and that's fine. But the fact is that the way that it's written currently in the workbooks can be a bit clunky. We can create more of an even flow with this. If we were depending on the demonstration factor of the teacher, then I think that there could be a more cohesive way of writing this. I mean, the issue is that there's a lot of information to get through. Well, yes. And some of it you do just have to have there so that you can find it later. So I guess the other thing that, um, that could be done would be more printable 
or downloadable charts being just available through the association. Um, I know that you can always purchase such things from the bookstore, but just having access to more materials that make it easier to use um, in sort of maybe a centralized location. Looking at Nolative. <laughs> when I read this question, I, my brain went in a little bit of a different direction, more like when I first started, I mean, when Hannah and I took our first class, we were very, very young. And obviously that's not what, the kind of the age that it's geared towards but kind of been taking courses I always kind of felt like the courses were more geared towards um, people who are quite a bit older kind of more middle-aged and those were the people in the classes and having that made it feel more to me like I was kind of an exception like this was something that I was doing but it wasn't designed for me and moving forward I would love for Touch for Health to have a little bit more kind of geared towards more young people Mm -hmm. Um, and coming at it, especially from how Touch for Health helped me so much with my mental health, I'd love to have a little bit more of that included. There's a lot of stuff in the textbook about mental health, but having it kind of be more of a focus and having it geared, I think, a little bit towards um, younger people like teenagers would make it feel more kind of inclusive to them, as opposed to they're in kind of an adult modality, then this is kind of a modality for for a wider uh, spectrum of ages. Something that I might like is if, as a community, we could contemplate making Touch for Health a bit more of a platform upon which other modalities might be built. Mom, you've done a lot with this in GEMS, which is phenomenal and I love it. And that's the platform I use for most of the techniques when I'm actually uh, working with people. It's amazing. Some of this information is in the complete edition, for instance. We have those scan sheets in the back. We have all of that. And I think that having this as a more integrated platform that we can use other techniques with would be very helpful so that you can focus more on mental health aspects or physical aspects or whatever you require, whatever you specialize in. Well, I... Was, I was thinking a lot about um, like mental health and stuff too. And I was looking at these questions. I kind of put them more under uh, the last question, which is like, what needs to change? Um, where I, I do feel like there needs to be a shift in focus. That our world is a lot different now than it was 50 years ago. We, we're facing different issues. And especially if we're looking at kind of gearing it towards or broadening our audience a little bit towards the younger people as well, there are things that we need to address and focus on a little bit more, um, like mental health or like screen time or like, you know, there, there's a list that could go on. Yeah. I think the other thing would be mentors. I know we all have mentors because we're all sitting here together as young people in the, in the Touch for Health or in the Specialized Kinesiology community we, like, like Harris was saying, in Touch for Health class when we were 10, it's like we, we were on our own. Our, our moms were teaching the class and it still wasn't, it wasn't meant for us. And in the larger community, it's not aimed at people like us. And so having a little bit more mentorship, a little bit more acknowledgement and guidance and like, which would require other people kind of coming into that role. Well, yeah, I was thinking about that too. Like when I was looking at these questions, I was thinking that, like you said, like 50 years ago, young people were, were healthier. We, we didn't have the same amount of issues. There was kind of that term, you know, young and healthy, but I know so many young people that have autoimmune disorders and really extreme mental disorders. And these problems that used to be for people that were considerably older are now facing young people. And so if we keep waiting that's only going to get worse. So ideally, we'd want to tackle that younger before that happens so that if these things come up where you have a young person and they're, they're struggling with their mental health, they're struggling with their physical health, that they have the tools going into it instead of kind of, kind of going backwards. You want to be proactive. And how do we give these people the tools so that when these things come up, if they come up, it's not as scary. Somebody made the comment earlier about the networking and marketing. 
And I think that that's something that's always been missing in touch with health and specialized kinesiology in general, right? We are really excellent practitioners. We really are poor marketers and networkers. It's always been where there's a missing component there. And I think that the addition of you young people is going to change that because where I'm very limited in my social media content and what I can put out there, you guys are good at that, right? And that's probably the way it's going to shift with the focus and what else you can bring in is by that visual component as well. Um, you know, I, I do PowerPoints for my classes, which I find has been very helpful and kind of takes me out of that manual mode all the time. So if the manual is a little bit on that dry, clunky side, I kind of compensate for it by putting in that visual component, especially for the younger learners. Uh, but my skills compared to your skills are very limited. So I think that you guys, you know, you'll be the answer to a lot of those changes. I consider PowerPoint a fun class material. <laughs> I think that Hannah was really awesome when she said that, you know, it's you, you're taking kids and just handing them a big manual or a big textbook. That's not the way that a, the ideal way that a lot of young people learn anymore. And if you're taking it on, you're, you know, they're doing school, they're doing university or whatever, to just have that on is just going to make it feel almost kind of take it out of that like fun interactive mode and more into that just memorization. I have to pass a test. I have to retain this for a, for a certain kind of external purpose rather than I'm learning this for me. So taking it from like a PowerPoint or a way that's easier to learn it is going to make it seem less, I don't want to say like a chore, but if you're just reading something out of a textbook, it kind of is. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, I mean, when we took touch for health, and I've seen, you know, when other people take it for health, they get excited about the charts, you get excited about the pictures, you get excited about when you do a color balance and your teacher hands you five pieces of paper that are different colors and you're like, you feel very powerful and you're like, you have all the elements in your hands. <laughs> and, and that's the part <laughs> that people get excited about and that people are like really um, really engaged in, you know, you get handed those things and people are like, well, what do I do with this? And they you, want to learn. Even adults have handed out colored cards to my students. Their eyes just light up. Yes. <laughs> or if you have handouts that are not in the textbook that people can draw in the margins and draw, the, you know, make their own diagrams and stuff like that. Which is not to say the textbook isn't helpful because it has, there's a lot of information that needs to be somewhere. So we've, we've heard lots from the kids about this, but I'm curious for the two of you, um, do you feel like you are supported by Touch for Health as a modality? Like how are you being supported right now by it as a modality? And are there ways where it could support you better or where you would feel more of that? I'm not really sure uh, how to answer that really, because I mean, it is part of my life. It's, it's part of my life every day. And if, you know, I run into a problem, I can call her, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how to answer that. I just, I feel, I feel good about it. I feel, yeah. Actually, I'm feeling pretty good about the support network right now. We've, I think as a community here, we've worked hard in the last little while to improve it and to form a, a bit of a community where we are relying a little bit more on each other, where we have that opportunity to phone or to ask questions or, you know, to do that. Um, so I think that it's, it's coming. I think that has been missing in the past, but I think it's, we're working on it. Yeah. At least here, we're working on it pretty well. And I think that with the addition of the ability to now uh, teach online, that's been huge because there was this, what happened when COVID hit, right? And all of a sudden we couldn't teach classes and everybody was kind of stuck and where to go from there. And now that's all been cleared up and guidelines are given and that opens up a whole new avenue which probably should have been opened up a while ago anyway so now we're, we're working through the the pros and the cons and the how to do it the, you know the tactics a little bit but it's I think that's going to open up touch for health tremendously and uh you know the, the IKC and the association are working hard to I think be supportive in that regard and we are trying to Paris and I have been scheduling online meetings with our community throughout British Columbia and bringing in people every couple months online, just a Zoom class to check in, see how you guys are doing you know, with COVID, with, with your business, do you have any questions? How can we 
help each other? Is there something you need from the group? Is there something you can contribute to the group? It's been very positive, like really positive comments that have come back. But the one thing that everyone has consistently said is that they love this building of community. So if we can provide a better support, kind of going into the mentor idea that kids are bringing up, it's been pretty good. I, I personally don't feel a, a lack. I think it's, it's shifting in the right direction. Cool. Okay, so then asking everybody, but again, kind of bringing our focus to the youth again, because we're looking at not just the legacy here, but also being able to move forward. Um, how do we get more people, more young people engaged in this in all aspects? I mean, engaged in this, like, yes, get them on the table as clients so that they can have the benefits of this, but also make it into an attractive career option uh, so that we end up with more practitioners at, fresh out of school, right? As opposed to it being a, a second or third career in life, which is usually what we see. You know, how applied kinesiology is often used in the sports world where they simply use that in order to check on people and try to help with injuries and keep them in the best condition possible. You mean like sports kinesiology, right? Sports kinesiology, yes. We should just have that generally. I mean, these small techniques, the things that people can do for themselves and for their kids, like the K for Kids uh, class that we did when we were younger, that should be common knowledge. We tend to sort of hang on to the techniques of this modality, and that has to do somewhat with marketing, but it also seems to have to do with certain protectiveness. We should have that be as mainstream as possible. Have that as part of a school program, maybe. How do we do that? Is that copyright infringement? Probably, just... <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm sure somebody in this group will let us know. <laughs> I'm speaking in broad and crazy hypotheticals here. I am just envisioning that these things that we have said helped us with schoolwork and our activities as children, the switch-ons, the zip-ups, the muscle testing, the K for kids stuff. If we could incorporate that into, say, public school systems, if possible, then that would be drastically influential. Just add it to the health class and call it done. Add it to the health class. Give ESRs to teenagers in high schools. <laughs> it would help everything. There are a lot of schools where they've uh, adopted brain gym kind of techniques, right? And um, educate and where you've had like different teachers go into a, a school district and set some of those things up and there's really solid research that shows that this is really helpful like across the board with um, academics with uh, socializing between groups it, it seems to be we know it works right excellent we should do that more <laughs> Ezra only has one thing it's reform school systems globally. <laughs> if we could just do that, we would have to ask. The way that school has functioned, instead of British Columbia specifically, has changed in recent years. They simply changed the way that the education is formatted. If one of the associations based in Touch for Health were to try to extend this research to selected schools, it might start to make a difference. I was going to say one of the things that appeals to me kind of like coming out of school and looking at a career in Touch for Health, one of the things that really draws me is that it's kind of this never ending thing. Like in a lot of careers, you kind of you can learn a lot, but then it kind of stops and it you know, you decide you want to do something else or you don't like something about it, you're kind of stuck. Whereas looking at Touch for Health, there's so many add-ons. Things are always getting researched. Things are always um, being added in. There's always a new way to look at it, a new perspective. Every person that you work on, every student, every client brings something new. So for myself, like I find that I never get bored of it, no matter how many classes, how many clients, all of those things, because it's kind of this never-ending 
education and never ending um, creativity that goes with it. And I think that that's really appealing to young people because a lot of people are coming out of school with no idea what they want to do. And there's so many options and it's really overwhelming. So in a way, it's kind of a career path that you can choose, but it's you don't have to choose it. And then that's it. There's a different aspect you can work with it. But sort of building on that is the fact that most people don't recognize that it is an option as far as a career, right? So when you finish high school, you have certain opportunities, you know, that you can go into a career line, right? You can pursue this, you can pursue this, but n at none of those points is touch for health or specialized kinesiology an option, unless you happen to be born into a family or you happen to be associated with it, it's not even an option. So probably what we need to do is market it as that. So have it, have it laid out as to you would need to do this course, this course, this course, which I know we've done in the past, but we've never marketed it at young people, right? And from there, you can build this particular career. So if we took a little more time and actually put together a program that would follow a high school or a college course, then it might be something that people would consider just in the, as a general public, as opposed to something, like I said, where you just kind of inherit the legacy. I think that in most schools, I'm, I'm sure they still do that. They have a career day when they examine all the different careers, particularly in the senior I years. Really <laughs> That's not as if I've ever been in a school. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be nice to, you know, to uh, implement that and just, you know, go visit them and show them what you can do and what's available for them too. It is a career. The goal of this modality was to be for the lay person, to have someone in every household able to do this. If we had some slight representation in a public school and post school system, that would fairly accomplish that. I feel like one thing would be to switch the focus a little bit into much more of the like mental health kind of range. Because I, I also know a lot of people right now who are finishing high school or starting college who are really interested in psychology. And the reason is because that's where people are having difficulties. That's where people's friends are having difficulties and they want to understand that better and they want to you know, I don't know if the goal is even to like find a solution because I don't think a lot of people know that there are options like this so switching that um, focus just a little bit I think would put it into the realm of what a lot of us kind of coming out of school are interested in learning more about and then as far as it being more more attainable as a career option, it needs to be marketed that way. Absolutely, like grandma was saying, but it's often cheaper and faster. There's very low barrier to entry. So if you can get it to that point where you notice it, you need people to know it exists. But once you hit that point, it becomes, um, you know, especially for someone like me, who's like, I came out of high school. I didn't want to go to college because I didn't know what I wanted to do. It's like, well, you can, you can take a class, right? You don't have to commit to four years to get a degree in it. In some places you can, right? I think places in Europe and Australia, there are colleges for specialized kinesiology, but in North America, there's not really. And yeah, you can, it's so much faster to get into and there's, there's really no barrier to entry because right from the first minute of Touch Your Health One, you're, you're in, you're good. So um, I feel like it becomes accessible as soon as it becomes visible. As soon as it hits the radar. We had a young girl who was working into her university program of kinesiology in university. And at one of the centers, she came and did job shadowing at our place. And she was probably about two and a half to three years into her program of the four-year program. And I was talking to her and I'm like, well, now that you're, fin you're finishing every program, what are you going to do? And she was like, well, I could go work in a physiotherapy office. I could look here. And I'm like, and what is your potential for income? And she says, well, I could probably make about that $25 an hour mark. And I'm like, four years of university. If you had given me a couple months, okay. right? Uh, putting you through the Touch for Health Synthesis and the IGW and adding on gems. And I feel like that you could be making so much more money. You could have saved yourself a lot of debt 
right? And you could be doing something that you were really helping people with on all those different levels, but it wasn't on the radar, exactly what you're saying, right? So if she had known that, she might have made a different choice, but they don't know that that's an option. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason it's not is because it's not, well, it hasn't been seen as as good or, you know, it's kind of weird. And growing up, especially, like, I was a, kind of afraid to tell my friends what I was doing on the weekends because they would give you this book. But I think that that's really shifting now with, like, knowledge and with, like, it's it looks more, when someone looks into it, it doesn't look like, oh, this is weird. Oh, this is one person doing this. It's something that's really well researched and there's a huge community and it's very professional and it's very well organized and all those things and that changes it like I said going from well marketing it as a class to marketing it as a career this is something really viable to kind of build your career out of mm-hmm. you have to watch the glitter for that one a little bit <laughs> Potential social stigma for the weirdness in teenager <laughs> circles is a real thing. But it's again, if it was thing. implemented in some fashion, if it was marketed, then that would become less of a thing. Also, quite frankly, all of our friends got really used to it as long as we proved useful with it pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. It's, That's the thing what are you doing? <laughs> Figure eights. Oh, <laughs> carry on That's then. The stigma's there, but it's, a lot of it is self-imposed. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you do this too, but I've found like a lot of the time you're, you know, you're kind of hesitant to say what you're doing or the, what the class is about. And I've had to do this a lot lately because I started teaching and I tell people I'm teaching. They're like, oh, what do you teach? <laughs> I don't want to explain. <laughs> it's kind of self imposed. But a lot of people are really into it. And, and they go, oh, that's, I mean, even if they don't get it or they don't believe in it, they still go, that's neat. <laughs> something I noticed when we were teaching was that you get two and a half hours into the first day of level one and people are muscle testing and it just sort of flows one section of the book into the other, right? You teach this and you teach this and you teach why that works and then you show how to do it and then they're muscle testing in order to indicate stresses in the body. And my personal favorite is that after they're doing that at the three hour mark on the first day they go what did I just do (laughs) yeah you can explain it quite quickly and then prove your results and then be helpful to those around you yeah while I'm while I'm mentally rewriting touch for health manuals (laughs) Um, I would. I, I just want to for a while. I mean, it's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to at this point. While I'm mentally rewriting Touch for Health manuals, I really liked what Para said. Where it's like it's actually really researched now. We have a lot more case study kind of data to draw on. It, it's become a much more valid tool over a period of time, and. It doesn't have to be weird. <laughs> it doesn't have to be as weird. The, the manual as we have it has a lot of research and a lot of the science that they did at the time, but we have more now. You know, we can add, I've been reading um, Ann Jensen's work recently and her like actual studies about how muscle testing works and it does work. And doing the double blind tests, like we have that information now. And I think we should draw on it to kind of um, enforce the idea of the validity of the modality. When I started using the, the logo and the brand of Kinesio Geek, it was for exactly that reason. It was this idea that like, I do this weird thing, but also, you know, I'm just embracing the weird and we can all just choose to embrace the weird. Like... Um, it's okay. And what you're saying, we do have better research now than we had a few years ago. And I feel like a lot of the Touch for Health material, I was actually writing about this for this presentation today, um, because I'm also writing my notes for the part that isn't this. And I was sort of saying like, a lot of what we do in Touch for Health is sort of to prove that it works, right? And so I think we end up spending a lot of time on certain mechanics because we need to prove that it works. But we do have evidence that things work now. And not only do we have better evidence, but also the world around us has changed. 
and alternative health and holistic health and acupuncture meridians. I mean, in the eighties, if you said meridian, it was assumed that you were dabbling in some kind of crazy occult sort of thing, right? Like it's it, to say chi or energy sounded scary to a lot of people because there wasn't the same understanding. And now people have an understanding of what this is. So we can be a little softer, right? Um, we can focus more on the, the playful bits and the more fun bits, as you guys are saying, because a lot of the mechanics have sort of worked themselves out in a lot of ways, right? I was thinking we, we have a background of chiropractic and osteopaths, which are proven modalities and Chinese medicine, which is now a proven modality. So if we use those as our background, we can forego a lot of the, hey, we're just out here being weird, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have we have solid we have solid science background for both of those things because it is really a combination of that eastern western that's brought in but all but both of those or all three of those have been really proven over the years and like you said now that it's kind of more accepted it's instead of focusing so much on well what is it and how does it work it's how do we use it like hannah said mm -hmm. there's a lot of questions our world is changing especially young people which is what we're talking about have questions about the, their world, their circumstances. I've noticed that a lot of people, like Hannah said, are really interested in that psychology aspect of things and kind of goes into what I was talking about earlier, which is when you have something with you or your family, it's not less about, well, what is it? It's why and answering those questions and finding the solution instead of just always going, well, what is this? What's happening? What is Touch for Health? What is all of these um, symptoms or all those things. It's how do we use that to actually benefit people? Yeah, Paris, I agree. Because it, it all comes back to that idea of like being empowered and being in control and being able to do something in that situation mm -hmm. gives you so much confidence. It builds self-awareness, self-confidence, self-responsibility. And that's, that's what I got out of Touch for Health like the first time, you know, and even teaching and it now, I'm getting that again. It um, takes away the element of fear. Like you were mentioning earlier that so many people are afraid now because of the things that are happening. But this takes away that element too, because well, I don't know what to do about it now. So it does make a difference. And especially with young people, it's really good for them to feel that empowered. I know that I've been asked for over the past couple of months, several times people with children kind of around that nine to 12 range have asked me to talk to their kids or do something. I ended up running a K for kids class, but even just on more of a talking aspect, kids younger and younger are kind of dealing with those mental health issues with those physical issues. Yeah. And it's really scary for them. It's kind of coming into coming out of childhood and now you're being bombarded with all of these issues that you never had before and you don't know why they're happening. And you don't know what's going on. And it kind of reminded me when you said that that mentorship, like having figures going, no, this is this is normal. What you're feeling is normal and it will be OK. And here's how you can deal with it. Having that available for those kids who are just like I said, they don't they don't know why that's really scary. But having somebody who's gone through that, somebody who has those tools and who's not that far off in age from them, somebody younger, a little bit more accessible, can really help them to see, oh, well, there is there is something out there that can help. There are those answers that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's important for all of us. I'm still doing that where I'm teaching classes and I'm still asking mom for help with stuff and, and mentorship on stuff. And it's knowing that you have someone that you can ask. Even, you know, people who don't necessarily have this, like we do, but um, like you're saying, people- Does anybody who, have this? No one has <laughs> this. <laughs> We're special. We're um, unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it definitely comes back to that too. <laughs> Our tools are even more pertinent than they used to be. If we can- get them out there to people who need them. Yeah. So I think the other thing that I had kind of been thinking about in regards to things that could change is, and I think I've maybe mentioned it earlier, but like centralizing knowledge a little bit 
everyone kind of specializes in something different and the um the associations are notoriously bad for being coordinated with each other most of us and I don't think that's even just younger people in the field but like a lot of people in the field don't necessarily know where do I go next or what is the association's job or where can I find resources or where can I find community ideally having a little bit more communication between everyone because our world is more global now and the, those resources do exist globally, but not necessarily interconnected with each other. So I would say ideally part of bringing awareness to it is yes, bringing awareness to new people, younger people and making it an option. And then once you have them here, <laughs> giving them some let way them go. go. <laughs> yeah, but giving them some way to like, what can you actually do with this? Or what kind of support do you have? Because there is support. And like grandma was saying, there's a lot of people who are building communities in their area or who are building communities online or are making cool resources. It's just that we don't all know where they are. So just having kind of some way of accessing more of that would be a really great thing, I think. I totally agree with that. I remember like when I started teaching being like, I know that in theory, there are so many communities out there. I know that, you know, I know that there are schools and um, groups and organizations out there, but to not see it, to not be a part of it still makes you kind of feel like, well, this is just something I'm doing. And um, kind of, is, is kind of lonely not have, being attached to those communities, but I do think that that's changing and continues to, needs to continue to change where it's not just, oh, well, I know that those exist, but here's how I can access them, here's how I can be a part of them. I know there's communities out there, but I don't know how to find them. It sounds like us trying to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be friends somewhere, right? Being able to be online again and attend some of these conferences that I would be able to have attended in person, like Melvin's last one was just amazing because you do get that sense, right? Um, things that people are doing around the world, and how many people are like you and you have that sense of community and you, you learn something new and it does give you that. So we, making those conferences, um, continuing them, I think is really important and, and getting young people to them, I think would be fantastic. Yeah, like I miss the in-person conferences. I miss hugging everyone and, um, and you know the feedback of actually seeing the people that you're presenting to so that you know that you're not being dull beyond all reason and going for dinner and wine with your friends afterwards. I miss all of that, but I'm also really grateful that I think a lot of people who would never have been able to take the time off or uh, have the financial resources or whatever it is um, to go to a lot of these things in person before are, are getting to conferences for the first time this year. And that's very cool. Because we've been able to do a lot of stuff online, it's really changed how we work. Um, you know, things like the open houses and things like, like doing Zoom calls for people in BC that you guys are doing to do check-ins and, and things like that would not have happened before and those are what's building community and that is what's supporting more and more people and i do i do want to start doing open house kind of things for youth in kinesiology i think it needs to happen having those conversations and um and being able to be a part of <laughs> learning together and sharing techniques and talking about the stuff we all do that's weird and we can't talk to our other friends about. And um, it's important, it really is. I'm so glad you just brought that up because I was gonna shove you in that direction in a minute if you didn't. So I, <laughs> that. this is me committing to doing the thing, okay? Can you keep the admission in the edited copy, please? I'm going yes. to, yep. <laughs> I want everyone to know just how pushy I actually am with this. Uh, okay, so Sweet. for people who are- Were people <laughs> doubting that? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's pretty common knowledge. Now that they've met all of us, 
I feel yeah. like <laughs> there can be no doubt about it's going to be works or where people, they come from. It's going to be people watching this book. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's um, people watching this who like actually can't tell anyone on the screen apart because <laughs> we all have the same mannerisms. So just for anyone who is familiar with with what Hannah's talking about when she says open houses, um, I've been for the last several months hosting once a month uh, meetings through Nolative. They're free, but we've been setting a topic. And the topic is usually something where there's lots of different points of view in the kinesiology world between modalities, between practitioners. Um, so we'll talk about something, uh, self-sabotage or ways of collecting data in a session or um, centering and grounding techniques. And people come online from all over the world. We often have people from you know, eight or nine different countries and we're able to just discuss something for an hour, right? And a lot of those discussions have been so good that we've gone, okay, we're actually going to use this same topic again. Um, we're gonna recycle the topic because we easily could have talked about this for another hour, right? And so Hannah's been attending some of these with me and, and we've been discussing how there should be something like this for younger people who are still forming their way of working, right? And are, are just figuring stuff out. But it's been very, it's been a very cool um, venue to be able to hold this space and get different answers from people all over the place about how they deal with certain challenges and to see all the different ways of doing it. And people have been sharing in a really um, like open and generous way. Like you'll get people who are going, let me find you the book that that comes from and let me just show you the technique and people will just stand up and do the technique together. And it's, it's really lovely. I don't know that a lot of other um, disciplines in the world have that same kind of open loving connection with complete strangers. So um, I, I find it pretty wonderful. One of the things that I've loved about those meetings is just that um, even you, you've been picking topics where there's a lot of different thoughts or that different modalities go different ways, but everyone can agree on the fact that it's important and why it's important. That is kind of what I would want to bring into um, kind of a youth version of it, where we, you would bring in the topics that are important and the topics that are like, okay, what do you do now? How do you use that in a session where it's like, these are the things that are important that we all need, that we all do, you know, maybe bringing in mentors and, and just being able to provide that kind of support where it's like, where do you find those resources? And, and that would be the place where you would find the resources. That's a really that good idea. Cool. Also, Ezra, did you just turn that cat into a dog? Yeah. Okay. Look, I'm not going to stop petting small animals simply because we're doing a recording thing. It's not going to happen. Look, he's a dog. Did she fight back the toad? No, I scared it off for her. Um, no, there. I mean, there are actually a few of us, which is the weird thing. Is like the three of us were talking because we're active touch for teachers, but there are actually quite a few, like late teen early 20s kind of people in specialized kinesiology right now and uh, I don't know what they're doing and I don't know how they're doing or whether they've kept working with it or um, whether they've been able to attend conferences and and find resources because we're not connected and we should be. In the last I'm going to say the last year I've had a lot of young people that you know their mom and dad used to drag them to me to, as for sessions right? But they're now in that 18 to 23-ish range. And they're, they're making their appointments, they're coming, they're doing it of their own will, right? It's something they're interested in, they're asking, they're using the skills, they're in, in work situations. So that their attitude has really changed. This is something they're doing for them now. They're not doing because they have to come and, and do that. And they're really interested in it. So when I'm listening to you guys, I'm thinking, you know what, I, if I took more of an interest in um, teaching them a little bit more, even even though they're not maybe practitioners, they might want to come to something like an open house if it was based on a skill that they could get, right? Something that they could learn um, and pick up after an hour or something like that and join in the discussion. And you just never know where that might take them, right? Because that, then they might go, hey, you know, I had thought of this as an option, but 
it's definitely that because they're, they've always got the interest. You know, um, at a conference now, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but I think it was a couple years ago, Matthew did a presentation where he talked about um, breaking touch for health down into these little bite-sized bits, like rather than um, necessarily teaching the level as an entire course and kind of like how you get a gym membership and then you can go every day or you can go once and you can leave it alone for a while or you can never go like some of us um you know it would be kind of like a, a come, and get, come and get bits like as as you need them right and when you're saying that that's sort of what I'm thinking like um some little manageable bit right not a whole day not something expensive but a little bit yeah that's a good idea yeah, because they're coming, they're coming for that mental health aspect, right? Very few of them are coming because they have physical issues. Some, but but most of them are coming because they're now dealing in the workforce and they've got relationship stuff and they've got their own things that they're dealing with. So if they knew that they could get on with other young people and gain a skill a little bit, right? I think that I think that would be something that they would like. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, does anybody have any last things they want to say before we turn off the recording? I'm just going to say I'm really proud of all of you guys. I mean, you've just done, no, really. I mean, uh -huh. seriously, you, you've <laughs> taken something that I really believe in because I've seen throughout the years how it's helped people that you say physically, emotionally, mentally, and everything. And you've taken it and you've, you've developed it into something that's even better and, and gone with it. I love that. And now to see these young ones, it's perfect. It's hard not to sit here and just feel a lot of gratitude. I mean, I am grateful that I grew up with this kind of a system. I'm grateful that my kids decided to use it and run with it rather than, um, you know, just go, well, that's the weird thing that mom does and walk in the other direction. Decided to. <laughs> <laughs>